Hi friends! Today is going to be my wrap up for the month of March. <laughs> I'm read a total of 15 books or 5,837 pages, which means although I read one less book than I did in February, I actually read more pages this month, and that is in large part due to the fact that I DNF'd 10 books this month. I will not be talking about those in this video or in my TBR takedown. I did a separate video on those and that'll go up probably around this time next week. I've already filmed it, just have to edit it, so it should be fine. I should be back to normal now, guys. I think I've got everything under control. I think I've got enough of the office completed. I'm, I think I think we're going back to like our normal two time a week video. I, I think we're gonna be okay. Speaking of having everything under control, I'm gonna try to do these lowest rated to highest rated as usual, um, but I didn't sort them out. So I'm just going based off of my reading planner for the month. So first we need to talk about my rereads. The first reread this month was Truth Witch by Susan Denner. This is one of my favorite series of all time. The fifth book in the series is coming out later this year. J.D. Ray Reads, who I will link in the description box down below, is doing a readathon for the rereads of the series going into the new release. So in March we were reading Truth Witch, next month we'll be reading Wind Witch. There will be a live show for this on April 10th. So if you haven't picked this up yet or if you have read it and would still like to participate in the live show, you have a couple of days to read it and jump in to the fun. As I said, this is one of my favorite series of all time, so obviously I liked it. And then we read 10 Blind Dates by Ashley Elston. I DNF'd like 10 books in a row and I was like, I need something that is guaranteed for me to enjoy. So I reread 10 Blind Dates, which I really love. The sequel to this I have an arc for that comes out, I think in June, somewhere around in there. So there's a sequel to this coming up and I have an arc for it. So I wanted to reread this one and I needed something I enjoyed. So this was my favorite book of 2019. I then reread Our Chemical Hearts by Crystal Sutherland. I think I'm gonna rewatch the movie maybe next weekend as well. Crystal Sutherland is one of my autobi authors. She is one of my favorite authors of all time, which is saying something because she only has two books out, but I really loved both of them. Her other book, The Same Dependent of a List of Worst Nightmares, I reread either in January or February of this year. I reread both of these books every year. The Same Dependent of a List is probably one of my favorite books of all time. Yeah, we read this. So other than my slew of DNFs. My lowest rating this month was 3.75 and I had quite a few of those so let's go into those. The first of which is Catacomb by Madeline Rue. This is the third book in the Asylum series which I read the other two books last month so if you want to know more about those you can check out last month's wrap up. The series follows Dan, Abby, and Jordan. They're three students who meet each other for the first time at this summer college program. Um, they're high school students but they are going to this program at a college over the summer to like help them with their college applications and they learn once they're there that this is actually an old asylum and some spooky things start happening. This is a found photo series much like Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. I didn't really enjoy the photos in these. I thought they were kind of childish and they didn't really add to the story. Um, they didn't take away from it but they didn't add to it so for me the photos were kind of pointless but I did enjoy the series overall. I ended up giving this a 3.75 out of 5 stars. I think that's the highest I rated any of the books in the series but um, they definitely have creep factor. Like the plots in them are okay, the characters are okay, but the creep factor is high. Um, so if you're looking for like a spooky short series to read. We then have Sanctuary by Karen Lix. This was the March pick for the Avengers Initiative reading challenge which I will link one of the girls um, intro videos down below if you want to know more about that. It is a year-long reading challenge that I'm doing that has to do with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So there's that. Uh, this book in particular follows Kinsey who is a junior guard on this space station Thai prison where uh, her mother and her father and there I think there are three other guards that work there as well and this place is where they detain people, mostly teenagers, who have powers and then use those powers for ill and um, it talks a lot about like classism and how a system is set against these people and there's a whole lot of things going on. There is a big bad that is unexpected but kind of awesome. Um, definitely creepy and 
this book is about how the other guards are kind of indisposed and Kinsey has to go into the prison and trust these prisoners to help her defeat the big bad of the series. I do plan to continue on with the series even though I only gave it 3.75 because I, I enjoyed it. Also in 3.75 land one of us is lying by Karen and McManus. I don't want to give too many of my thoughts for this because this is the um, book club pick for the Off the Tube Chat Book Club which I run with Kate Cavanaugh. We will be discussing this book on April 20th on Kate's channel which I will link down below at 6 30 p.m eastern standard time. So this book follows five classmates who are in detention. It's kind of like a breakfast club situation where they're all from different walks of life and so five students go in to the detention and by the end of the detention one of the students is dead and so the book follows them trying to figure out who is actually the killer. Um, it is a YA mystery thriller. It's actually really really good. Um, I do plan to read the sequel to this as well and pick up some more Karen and McManus while I'm at it. We then have The Cold is in Her Bone by Peter Nell Van Arsdale. This was kindly sent to me by the wonderful beautifully bookish Bethany who I will link down below because we were discussing my love of all things Medusa and she was like I have this light Medusa retelling and I liked it but it wasn't great but maybe you'll like it more than me. Again, I gave it a 3.75 out of 5 stars along with everything else that I read this month. I don't know why. Um, I really enjoyed this. This book is about a young girl named Mila who lives in this secluded farm with her parents and her brother and there's an older couple that live next door and they never really let Mila go anywhere or do anything. She's not allowed out into um, like the rest of society. While Mila's like trying to figure out why her family doesn't ever let her go anywhere or meet anyone or do anything, the older couple next door, their granddaughter Iris comes to live with them and Iris informs Mila that the reason why they're really not part of the town is because the town has been cursed and girls randomly will be taken over by this demon and they have to be locked up and their families can basically never see them again. They can if they choose to but most of them choose not to because there's a demon in there. Naturally Mila's family is really angry about Iris telling Mila this because they feel like they had been protecting her from it and they thought that if she didn't know about it that it couldn't happen to her and that was why they lived so far on the outskirts of the town and Iris starts to be kind of taken over by the demon is unlike herself and so she's taken to the place where they take all of the girls and Mila's brother goes as well um, because he was betrothed to Iris and he feels like he should stay and help take care of her and Mila is like no y'all I'm gonna rescue her. So this is like a rescue mission as well as um, a book about people being kind of on the outside of other of the world and just I really I really like this story. Um, again I gave it a 3.75 out of 5 stars which for me is not a bad rating. Um, I really enjoyed it. I really liked Mila's character and I like the darkness of like how the demon came about and what the demon is for. There's some magic in here obviously because we're talking about demons uh, but there's some magic in here and um, I really like the way that everything ended. I like the way that this book worked and um, like the found family aspect of it and um, how strong the bond is between Mila and Iris and Mila's brother. Um, the three of them as a whole and um, I just really enjoyed it. Also in 3.75 land I Reaper at the Gates by Saba Tahir. This series follows Laya who is part of this group of people known as the scholars. They are like very intelligent people and they're also the slaves and the downtrodden of this world and it also follows Elias who is a marshal who is the upper class of this society and he is trained as this elite warrior known as a mask and the series follows Laya whose grandparents are killed in the first chapter. Her parents are already dead, her grandparents are killed, her brother is taken um, and she makes a deal with this underground movement that's trying to take over the martial kingdom and um, or empire rather. It's an empire not a kingdom because he's an emperor not a king. It's a different thing. So Laia makes a deal with this underground movement to um, become a slave in the household of the leader of the masks in order to infiltrate give them information and in doing so they will then help her rescue her brother. 
Elias, who is trained as an assassin and a murderer, doesn't really like that he's trained as an assassin and a murderer. He's kind of a nice guy. And he kind of meets Laia and they realize that they have the same goals and they start to work together. And the series as a whole is amazing. I love the world building. I love the characters. I am here for all of it. It's a little slow moving. This is, this is a smidge slow moving. But the plot twists, like Saba is a queen of plot twists. They're like the character plot twists. Like the characters are never who you think they are. They always change. It is amazing. So love this series. Super excited. I'm waiting for either the audiobook to become available of the fourth book or for the paperback to be released because um, I want the paperback of all four. I don't want the hardback with three other paperbacks. It's just a thing, okay? So I won't be reading it until I get either of those two things or I might borrow it from the library. I guess I could borrow the physical copy from the library. I could do that. But yeah, so that's where I'm at. The last 3.75 of the bunch is Caraval by Stephanie Garber. This book is about Scarlett and Tella who are two sisters who live on this island where their father is kind of like the head honcho. I don't really know what his title is but he's a dickweed basically and the girls have been spending their entire lives trying to get away from him and they have been trying to get this master at the Carval to like meet with them and let them go to the Carval which is this game that people can go in and play and win something at the end and they just want adventure and they want to get away from their dad. Finally Legend replies to Scarlet's response and he's like, here's some tickets for you, your sister, your betrothed, because oh yeah, she's betrothed to a guy she's never met. Like, come hang out, come play the game. And this year's prize is a wish. And they're like, cool, let's go. So they go to this island and then once they get there, they're separated and it becomes like, is it a game? Is it not a game? How much of it is a game? It's a whole thing. I really enjoyed this book. I do plan to continue the series. I know some people have said like the series goes downhill or uphill, depending on how much you liked the first book. I know it's it, it's like questionable how much you love it. I really enjoyed it. I liked Stephanie's writing style so I'm gonna continue on. Maybe not soon because I don't own the whole series but I do plan to continue on. I then read uh, Bridge of Souls by Victoria Schwab which is a four out of five stars. It is the third book in the Cassidy Blake series. I don't know if it's the final book but I know it's the third book. I don't know if it's more than a trilogy. Um, it ended at a good spot but it also could continue. Who knows? Not me. Um, this series follows Cassidy Blake who is a young girl. It's a middle grade series and she can see ghosts. And the first book follows her and her ghost best friend Jacob who saved her from drowning. They discover that there are other people like Cassidy out there and her parents are like paranormal investigators slash debunkers and they go around to all these really spooky places. And so it's got high creep factor in the series. Um, this third book not so much. I didn't have as much creep factor. I didn't enjoy it as much as the first two um, but it did complete the story arc and I really enjoy the characters. So. And we then have my first 4.25 and that is Namesake by Adrienne Young. This is the follow-up to Fable. So this is the second book in the Fable duology. Fable follows Fable who is a young girl that when her mother dies her father who is the captain of this entire fleet of ships of pirate ships. Uh, he takes her to this island that is run by thieves and the denizens of like the bad people of society and he leaves her there and he's like one day find your way back to me and I will give you what you are owed and she lives there for many years trying to uh, make her life there and to get her way off of the island and to do all of the things and she inevitably pisses off a bunch of people on the island and she's essentially running for her life trying to get to this boat where she knows that she has been able to trade for the past few years with the helmsman and she barters passage onto his ship and on do in doing so she learns a lot about him and his shipmates. It's a series about like found family and your birth family and um how important found family can be and about honor and just a lot of things. I really enjoyed this series. Highly recommend. Love Adrienne Young. Highly recommend her as a whole. Uh, the next 4.25 was Only Mostly Devastated by Sophie Gonzalez. This is a Greece retelling done in modern day where our two love interests are both men. I loved this book. It was so good. Like I like Greece as far as like the storyline goes. It's fine. I liked more of the musical aspect of it as a kid than I did the actual plot because I felt like the plot was mm, a little questionable. I think this is a much better 
job of making the whole like becoming a different person for someone so much better um because one of the boys is closeted and one is not that plays a large part in why they can't be together really really enjoyed it i picked this up because i really enjoyed the arc i read of perfect on paper by sophie gonzalez that i read last month and i knew that there was another book that was her debut so i decided to pick it up i really enjoyed it i highly recommend if you like ya romance rom-com with two male love interests and there are some other um, LGBTQIA plus representatives in there as well. We're almost there guys, only three books left. Next is Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare. This is the second book in the Last Hours trilogy which takes place in like the 1900s. It is the children of the characters from the Infernal Devices. Okay, um, so this is the second book in the series. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I really love the Shadowhunter series. You know I'm a Shadowhunter stan. Like, I mean, look, I've got one shelf here. I've got a shelf here. You can't see it, but it's there. One here, one here, more books here. I'm a stan. Basically, I loved this book. Not as good as some of the other books that I've read in this series. Um, a lot of this one was just kind of like, it could have been shorter, basically, is where I'm going with that. But also, I don't care that it's not because it's Cassie Clare and like I just it's the it's the character interaction that I love. There could be no plot. It could just be like them hanging out on the couch having witty banter and I would be fine with that. So I have problems and we'll talk more about that when we talk about the highest rated book this month. Cool. We then have Crazy Stupid Bromance by Alyssa K. Adams. I gave that a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It's the third book in the Bromance Book Club series. This series follows a group of men who are like high up in politics or acting or music or sports and they are part of this book club where they read romance books in order to help them with their own real life relationships. So this particular book follows two characters from the previous book and I don't know their names right now and I don't have a copy of the book so I can't look it up. Um, I could look it up but that requires like extra work so just go with me on this one. It follows the guy who is like the hacker from book two and the girl who owns the coffee shop Toe Beans. Remember the name of the coffee shop but not the girl's name. So it follows those two characters. Honestly this was like my favorite of the three because the male love interest is the most like what I would look for in a male love interest. So this book really worked for me. I know it didn't work for everybody. There are some people who didn't like this one and this is like their least favorite of the three um, but this was my favorite of the three. Um, I love this series. I think it is so unrealistic but so amazing and I absolutely love it. I am so here for book four which is the Russians book and it's gonna be amazing. Oh, I'm so excited. So um, if you haven't picked up the romance book club series and you like adult romance books it is uh, there's a lot of sex so like if that's not your thing don't read it. Um, but it's an amazing series and I love it and I cannot wait for the Russians book. I'm so excited. And then bringing this back around to kind of see clear my highest rated book of the month which was a 4.75 out of 5 stars is the Lost Book of the White which is the second book in the Eldest Curses trilogy I believe uh, by Cassie Clare and Wesley Chu. And here's my thing. Most people really don't like the series because it is so much of like a retcon of everything else that we've read and I don't even care. Like <laughs> This book in particular follows closely after the events in the Shadowhunters Academy series. So like when one of the main characters from the Mortal Instruments goes to the Shadowhunter Academy to become a Shadowhunter. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Um, without giving away like the plot of everything, which at this point, if you care, you're already reading them. And if you don't care, then you don't care. So this series follows shortly after that time period. Well, I mean, they take place in different time periods because the first one was like four books before the, I don't know. Basically, the first book takes place but in the middle of the Mortal Instruments series and this one is after the Mortal Instruments series. I don't even know when the next one takes place, but moving on. This book in particular, um, they focus on Magnus and Alec who are like the main couple of the entire thing and they're wonderful. Um, but this one has a lot of the other main characters or the other relationships from the Mortal Instruments. So it has Clace in it and it has Sizzy in it, which I am a Sizzy stan girl. Let me tell you, like Sizzy is my thing. So I really love that couple and there's so much of them in this and it is amazing. Like, cause you don't ever really get to see, I mean, you do get to see them as a couple in the Mortal Instruments, but not like this, not like this. And because this takes place after the events of the Shadowhunter Academy, the last 
book and that the last like story in that book it is the one death in all of the shadow hunter chronicles that i will never forgive cassie for um it is the one that hurts me the most it is the one that i just cannot handle for reasons that are mentioned in this book um it's really hard for simon to deal with it and um for the same reasons that I have, the reasons why it's hard for me to deal with it that I just can't handle. Like they talked about that. I cried a lot while they were talking about that in this book and that's kind of like the main keep why this is rated so high because like my emotions of that particular scene. I mean the rest of it was fine. Not really a whole lot of plot. It was just kind of here or there. Like it should not be a 4.75 stars but just okay. I liked it. I liked that part. I liked the banter. I liked the relationships. It's not that good of a book, I promise you, but like if you are a Cassie stan you're gonna love it. So just go with me. Like this was like realistically worse than a lot of the books that I read that I gave like a 3.75 to and I gave this a 4.75 but just go with me on this one okay because sometimes it's really just about your enjoyment and my enjoyment factor was like a five. I enjoyed every minute of this even though it was slow and there wasn't a whole lot of plot and it just it's a thing it's just a thing like that's why I rate the books the way I rate them and sometimes it makes sense for the system and sometimes you're like why is this book rated so high I don't know but yeah I really enjoyed this I definitely plan to continue this series and continue to read Cassie Clear for the rest of forever because I love it. I'm not going to hold all of those up again so it's fine. Um, those are all the books I read this month. If you want to know more I have my full reviews on Goodreads linked down below. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future make sure you subscribe and until then I will see you guys next time. Bye! <laughs>